At the top of the page, I ask you to recall the definition of a complex number. So a complex number has both a real part, so that before the symbol, they have an A there, but they could use any other letter. And then the BI is your imaginary part. Complex numbers can be graphed, just like you can graph real numbers in equations, so on and so forth, um, but they have to be graphed in the complex plane, okay? Right here, we can graph real numbers on the number line. So on your paper, it doesn't come out as nice. So this is actually shaded in orange, but because yours is all printed in grayscale, I want you to shade in that dot. When you graph the number negative 1, it's just a dot at negative 1. When you graph 2, for example, the dot is right at 2. But I wanted to put this on the note page to go over again what the absolute value of a number is. By definition, the absolute value of a number is the distance it is away from 0. So the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 4 is 4. And distance is always positive. It's never negative. So when we graph in the complex plane, okay, we have to label our axes now to fit complex numbers. So in the complex plane, your horizontal axis, which is the x, is your real numbers. Okay, so x is the real. Your y-axis or the vertical axis is the imaginary. When you graph, the graph of a complex number is a vector. So think about if you've seen vectors before in science or maybe even in Geometry Common Core last year. Can anyone tell me what a vector is? We don't need to get into too much detail, but when you graph it and you look at the graph, you should see an arrow. Okay, it's indicated a specific or a di uh, directed length. It starts at the origin, which is the point zero, zero. And it ends at the point. Okay, so what a label, we know this from our I cycle, but quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Down below, finding the magnitude, all magnitude is is the length of your vector or complex number, okay? <coughs> now, back in geometry, you use the distance formula to find the length of a line segment, okay? We can still use that here. Or, what's this? The hypotenuse equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. Pythagorean theorem. So do you want to use distance formula or do you want to use Pythagorean theorem? Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to calculate that magnitude or length using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, the a and the b are your legs. You can look up to this picture. The c is the hypotenuse or the longest side. So I have a variety of vectors graphed in this complex plane to the right. It has the yi for imaginaries, and it has the x as the real. But as you can see in mine, they are in color. So 0, this is also 0 plus 4i. You're starting at 0 on the x-axis, going up 4 on the imaginary. 3 plus 4i, you go over 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4. You put a dot, and it has the arrow. Um, negative 4 plus 2i, you go left 4, up 2, put a dot, and then the arrow. 2 minus 3i, you go right 2, down 3. There's 2 minus 3i. And then this number here, 3, is just simply um, 3 plus 0i in complex form. So we're going to pick one, and let's pick 2 minus 3i. So if I want to find the magnitude of 2 minus 3i... Well, in order to use Pythagorean theorem, you have to have a right triangle. So you simply make one. 
That arrow is going to be the what of the right triangle. Do you think it's going to be a like or the hypotenuse? If I make a right triangle. What's that? Nope. It's actually going to be the hypotenuse. So to make a right triangle, I could make it right here. Okay? Or you can make a right triangle right here. Both right triangles are congruent, correct? It doesn't matter. So you want to look at the blue or the orange? Blue. So if I look at the blue, what's the length of this leg? Because here's the right angle. So it's a 3 by 2. You get those numbers right there for 2 minus 3i. And all you do to find the length of the vector, which is your c, is do 2 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. What's 2 squared plus 3 squared? 4 plus 9 is? So 13 equals c squared. Undo the square with the square root. And your hypotenuse is radical 13. You can't take the square root of 13, so you leave it. can't simplify 13. So the magnitude of 2 minus 3i equals radical 13. That's the length. So on the back, we're going to take a look at finding the magnitude of A, B, and C. But before that, why don't you graph them? So to graph 3 plus 4i, can anyone tell me the movement I would do? Right or left, up, down? So if it's 3, that's the real part. So I go to 3 on the x-axis, so right, 1, 2, 3, then up, Again, here's the imaginary axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there it is. Put your arrow. And here's 3 plus 4i. Let's graph negative 7 minus i. Can anyone describe the movement for that? Do you go right or left? 7. Left, because it's negative. So you go left 7 and then? Down how many? One. Left seven down one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven down one. There's the dot, and you need the arrow from the origin. You don't need to put a dot at the origin. If you have a straight edge, use a straight edge. I'm not using one, so I'm a little sloppy. And then here, this could be tricky. This is also the same, though, as zero minus four i. So you start at zero, the origin, and then you go down one, two, three, the length of that's really easy. Does anyone want to take a guess at the magnitude? Note when it's a horizontal or vertical line, you can just count the boxes. So how long is it? Four. So our magnitude is four. Nope. Not in the coordinate plane or in the complex plane, rather. So the magnitude's four, and then let's make a right triangle here. Let's make it along the x-axis. So here's my right triangle to have a squared, which is seven. Seven squared plus one squared equals c squared. So we got 49 plus one, which is 50. Undo the square with the square root. Can anyone go? Since we've just done a whole unit on radicals and been simplifying imaginary numbers, the square root of 50, final answer, 5 radical 2. Well, I should actually say is the magnitude. And you can abbreviate with mag if you want. The other class asked, and I said that was okay. Now, the last one, the magnitude. To make a right triangle here, let's go down, use the x-axis again. This is a 3, 4, it's a triple. Do you remember your Pythagorean triples in geometry? 3, 4, hypotenuse would have to be 5. Let's see if you know any more triples. 5, 12, 13. 6, 8. No. It's a double here. 3 times 2, 4 times 2, 5 times 2, so it would be 6, 8. 10. So if you want to write them down on the side, some triples, if you um, recognize them, are the 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. We said 5, 12, 13. Another big one is 8, 15, 
17, and the last one from geometry, 724, 25. Those are the big triples we use uh, in geometry, the ones we saw the most. So here our magnitude is 5 because it's a triple. Number two is a quadrant question. In which quadrant does the sum lie? So the first thing I need to do is add these two complex numbers together. What is the sum? Combine the real parts. 3 plus a negative 4 is negative 1. Thank you for participating. Positive 2i minus 5i. Negative 3i. If you just do a quick sketch, if you were to graph that, with the negative 1, do you go right 1 or left 1? Left 1, down 3. So left 1, down 3. Here's negative 1 minus 3i. That's in quadrant 3. Again, here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Last one. Take some time, graph 4 plus i, and I'll actually use a straight edge on the Promethean board, and graph negative 2 plus 3i. So right, one, two, three, four, up one. Negative two plus three I is left two up one, two, three. So your first one, uh, 4 plus i should be in quadrant 1, negative 2 plus, uh, plus 3 i should be in quadrant 4. The sum, it says to graph the vectors and the vector of their sum. What is the sum first? What's that? 2 plus 4i. So 4 plus negative 2 is 2i plus 3i is 4i. Good. 2 plus 4i is in quadrant so right two up one, two, three, four. In looking at those three vectors, if you were to take to and connect the origin to each dot of each vector, what would it form from geometry? So if you were to take and connect this to this to this, to this, to this. What geometric figure is that? It is a parallelogram. Good. This sum, if you want to make a note, and depending on if you go to further study engineering or some sort of um, math in college where maybe you need to know complex numbers, this sum is always the diagonal of, I'm going to draw a parallelogram, okay? And the parallelogram formed by connecting all four of those dots. It's called a resultant force. So if you ever study forces in science and physics maybe, or in college, it's called the resultant force of the two forces. <coughs> 